Hi little skeletons, it is Disney Queen Skelly here and welcome back to another Disney Theories Explored. So today we are exploring a Finding Nemo theory. Here it is. Nemo didn't survive the attack that killed his mother and siblings. Finding Nemo opens to arguably one of the saddest Disney scenes of all time. Marlin's wife Coral and all of their eggs are attacked by a ferocious fish, leaving Nemo and Marlin and only, and only survivors. However, some fans believe Nemo never survived the attack, and the movie is just an allegory of Marlin dealing with the stages of grief. The evidence? Let's start with the fact that in Latin, Nemo means nothing, hinting to Nemo being nothing more than a figment of Marlin's imagination. Secondly, the five stages of grief are easily mapped at, out in the movie. Denial, not wanting Nemo to go to school. Anger, yelling at Nemo when he swims out too far. Bargaining, journeying across the ocean. Despair, seeing Nemo flushed down the drain. Acceptance, learning to finally let go of the past. Okay, so I can kind of agree and disagree with this theory. Um, I can agree that there is a chance Nemo didn't make it. And Marlin is in such grief because, you know, his wife just died that maybe he is imagining this egg that somehow survived. But here's what gets me. And there's another thing that kind of gets me too, but I'll get to that later. One thing I don't understand is if this is, is all in his head, right? How would the events have played out? Is he one asleep in his anatomy the entire time and Finding Nemo Baby was just a dream? Or is it a case of like he has been crazy for so many years that the fish around him have just gone, have just taken on the role of, okay, we'll go through with this just to help him grieve. And since Dory isn't all mentally there, maybe she doesn't quite understand what uh, Marlon is going through. So she thinks Nemo's actually real since she ne hasn't necessarily seen him. And maybe once she notices him, like she notices the fact that maybe Marlon isn't looking at anything in the dentist office. Because if you notice, when they go into the dentist office and Nemo is kind of floating on his back dead, she, he, she says the words, oh my goodness. Maybe, one, maybe it's a case of like she's noticing that Nemo isn't exactly real. And even though she's not mentally all well, maybe she kind of understands that maybe this is something different that Marlon is going through. Or, and here's another thing that, that kind of throws me off. Say this, he's asleep in his, in his anemone, right? And he's pretty much dreaming all this. So I can get the denial not wanting Nemo to go to school, but at the same time, is that really like denial not wanting someone to go to school? Denial is usually like, you know, you don't think something is going to happen or, you know, something like that. I would uh, probably put that towards Nemo being taken as denial like no he's not gone like he can't be gone he can't be taken you know like when he was following the boat uh the anger yeah I can definitely see that when he yells at Nemo to come back but at the same time I could also see that as concern because that's open ocean you never know what's going to happen in open ocean especially for a kid but granted Marlon should have never really sheltered Nemo as much as he did which is why Nemo rebelled if Marlon had just kind of show him, shown him what the ocean was and also explained the dangers of the ocean, there could have been a case of Nemo understanding that, hey, that maybe there are some boundaries of the ocean that I can't go to, but there are also some cases where I can explore the ocean, where I can go and be me, but my, you know, Marlon also needs to learn to let go of it. And I don't know how quickly fish age, so Nemo is most likely in an elementary school stage, so he probably isn't old enough to do that yet, but his father could also accompany him or at least trust someone to go with him to these kinds of places. The bargaining, I wouldn't see the bargaining as journeying across the ocean. Bargaining is when you will literally, it's not that when you would, you would pretty much like give anything to do something like okay i think the simpsons kind of put it the best this is a weird example there's an early episode in season one where homer eats fugu and there's a chance he's poisoned and dr hibbert lists out the the stages of of grief and in the stage of bargaining homer goes doc you gotta get me out of this i'll make it worth your while he's willing to put anything forward to get better so i think with marlon with bargaining i think that's kind of like the journey isn't so much bargaining. I think it's what he's willing to do in that journey that's bargaining because he was willing to face sharks, jellyfish. He was willing to basically bargain his own life to save his sons is kind of how I interpreted that at least. Despair, there is definitely despair, especially when he thinks Nemo is dead 
and when he thinks he's going to lose him when they're all in the net and they're getting pulled up by the fishermen. So I can definitely agree with that. And the acceptance, um, he's, it says learning to finally let go of the past. Yes, he does let go, learn to let go of the past because the only reason he shelters Nemo as much as he does is because his wife and his other kids got eight. <laughs> and he doesn't want his only son, his only living child, to get eight. So I can get that, that Marlin is, that, that acceptance is Marlin saying like, you know, you're right. You can go off and do things that you want to do. Just be careful, you know, and Nemo is taught how to be careful. And I think this lesson that Nemo learns when he gets taken is definitely the kick in the teeth that not only Marlon needed, but Nemo needed to understand that they both need to come up with a compromise to not only have Nemo explore the ocean, but again, within safe boundaries. So anyways, that is today's Disney Theory. I thank y'all so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, little skeletons. Stay safe, and I love you guys.